We are underway here in Kitchener. The magic will go from left to right on your screens at home with their gray camo jerseys. Titans you know, wearing their blues at home for the first time this season. The starting five for Moncton, Corey Allman, Denzel Taylor, Marcus Lewis, Trey Kell, and Billy White. Allman, tough jumper, and he puts it up and in over Justin Strings. Got off the mark that time, and the rebound by Almond. Here's Billy White, who's been exceptional this season for Moncton. Pulls up, misses the three, but Taylor swats it back out to Almond, and a fresh 24 for the Magic. White, and too easy that time for him. Grabs his right hand after the play in pain, but the Magic have the first two buckets of the game. Horton, coast to coast, lays it in, and I'm sure he's fired up after the big win by his alma mater, Murray State. In the NCAA tournament, they took down Marquette on Thursday, and they're in action right now against Florida State. Taylor draws the foul, and he'll head to the line. to Magic early in this one. The Titans picked up a massive win last night in Windsor, 125-121. Not only did that move them to the final playoff spot, but with that, they win the season series over Windsor, which gives them the tiebreaker, which could be crucial. They also currently hold the tiebreaker over the St. John's Edge. The Titans could finish as high as second. Lynn pulls up for a deep three. Shot won't go. Apologize for the technical difficulties which are ironing out here at the odd currently. 7 5 Moncton takes the lead after the bucket. Whitfield, the miss on the inside. Whitfield was held scoreless in the first half last night, but ended up finishing with 13 second half points. Trey Kell from downtown gets the magic lead up to five. Strings leaves it for Horton. Now Whitfield. Lynn pulls up for two. Shot won't go. Whitfield swats it back out. And Lynn gets it. A fresh shot clock. Horton from downtown. Won't go again. And the rebound by Kell. too easy. Whitfield came in as the help defender and forced a foul. The lane just opened right up for him that time. And already, Flynn Whitfield, who's been in foul trouble, it seems, almost every game this season, he'll be forced to the bench early as Derek Hall checks into the ball game.
ball there for the rebound to the put back. Titans down five, 12 7. Might have combined for nine of the Magic's first 12 points. Lewis left all alone from outside, and Marcus Lewis drills the three. Too strong and the rebound by Hall. Horton up top to Strings. Drives right around Billy White and lays it in. Great move by Strings to bust right down Main Street and lay it in. White, that's a two. And a miss from Hall. On his second three-pointer already and Moncton's flying they got 20 points in the first five and a half minutes that time Kel got up for the block on Horton he's complaining to the officials as he then wraps up Denzel Taylor for the foul by Trey Kell and going against his body finds Taylor in the paint and a little bit of chance to put Moncton up 12 here early on in this one. Horton into the corner for Strings. Trying to slash through traffic, but lost it at his feet. And an easy dunk for Marcus Lewis. That'll prompt a timeout from Cavell Johnson. Didn't even wait for the media timeout. The Magic flying early out of the gates. They're up 14 at the midway point of the first. timeout Cavell Johnson trying to rally the troops he sends the same five out that he had on the floor before with the exception of Ashton Smith who's into the game Ellis tough shot won't go Hall the rebound and he'll draw the foul that time it's gonna go on Trey Cal it's his first This season, a 80% free throw shooter. Pretty good for a seven footer. So far, the season series tied at a game apiece. The home team having won both. Kell takes a step back, misses that one, and Hall swats it into the hands of Ashton Smith. Ellis, a bad pass, and into the hands of Billy White. White gets a running start. Feed to Taylor, and all too easy that time. He left Derek Hall in no man's land defensively. And
Horton draws a double, and he got tied up there. And it looks like the foul is going to go on Taylor. No. Nope. If anything, Horton's going to get called for the foul. I think they're talking about a potential clear path as there is no one between Kell and the bucket. And indeed, they are going to call unsporting. So Moncton will get free throw and possession. Taylor shot just 52% at the line this year, misses that one. He'll get one more and then the Magic will keep the ball. So Horton, Strings, and Whitfield, the three starters on the bench now for KW as they work themselves into some early foul trouble. White backing Ellis down in the post. Ellis stood his ground, but then a foul after the whistle. It's going to go on Billy White. Titans trailed for the most of last Saturday's game against London. Ended up pulling that one out in the second half. Hall, the step back, and puts it in. The big man coming off the bench and looking good on that soft touch. The Titans still got work to do. Allman passes through traffic, trying to find his man down low. Kick out, three ball is way off the mark from Lewis. Smith tries to lead Sutherland. Sutherland goes up against Billy White and runs into a brick wall. Nice defense from White. Bounce pass and another easy bucket for Lewis. Lynn driving high off the glass. Won't go. Hall the rebound and the score. Hall averages the second most boards per game across the country. And another big find inside. Taylor, a chance for a three-point play. Credit Corey Almond with the assist. The Magic just playing fundamental basketball and capitalizing on every opportunity they can get. Their starters play tremendous, and now some of the second rotation will come in. Gentry Thomas and Wayne McCullough both into the game for Moncton. Taylor completes the three-point play, a 16-point magic lead. And we're not even out of the first quarter. They're trying to play spoiler. They know that they can try and knock KW out of a playoff spot. Ellis, that one from way downtown, and hits the front rim. Here's White trying to cross up Sutherland. Tough shot. Hall got up for it, but it looks like it'll be last touch by Taylor at will. So KW gets the ball back. The Magic will have one game remaining after this. They head to Windsor tomorrow to wrap up their season, and then they can kind of let the rest of the league unfold. They get basically a week off before the playoffs. Smith takes it to the rack himself. 33-19, Magic. Thomas going to float that one into Billy White. White backs down Sutherland. They work it around. Thomas, open corner three. Shot won't go, and the rebound by Hall. Sutherland grabs the offensive rebound. Lynn misses on the three. Hall tried to swat it back out to one of his guards but instead he'll get called for the foul and now 
Cavell Johnson has his hand forced a bit. Nigel Titer is going to check in and Justin String. So a smaller lineup for Kitchener-Waterloo. That foul also puts the Titans in the penalty. Just under two and a half to play in the first quarter, so free throws the rest of way, with the rest of the way for the Magic and a chance to grow on this already huge first quarter lead. Taylor, good on the first. Taylor played four years of his college ball at Old Dominion. This is his second season in the league, having spent both of them with the Magic. Lynn drifts out of the corner, bounce feet to Strings. Strings in the paint, turns around, misses. Sutherland trying to get the offensive rebound, and he does. Lynn, bump fake, open three, bang. Come on, Lynn from downtown. Trying to get something going for KW. They're within 12. Thomas, feed down low to Taylor. Big size mismatch against Ashton Smith. And Denzel Taylor makes it look all too easy. He's off to a hot start. He's up to 13 points already. That's it. They're not beating them with creativity or fancy moves just good ball movement and lots of it being created on the defensive end and leading to great looks on the other end Allman that's good Corey Allman dials it up from downtown and it's a 15 point magic lead Lynn up top to Smith he's watched by Thomas defensively Smith draws a crowd, shot clock down to eight. Gotta get out of it, rips it all the way across strings. Down low, a bit of a push off, but the foul looks like it's gonna go on Wayne McCullough. No, nope, it's actually gonna go on Billy White. So that'll be his first. Strings has had his struggles at the free throw line this year. He misses the second, but he'll have a chance as there is a lane violation called against the Magic. He shot about 63% from the line this season. Let's see if the Magic try and Put this one out of reach even more. A chance for a two for one. White goes up hard against Titer, but comes up empty. Lynn, oh, what a feed for Sutherland. Sutherland threw it off. McCullough and out. Sutherland knew that he had no chance of making a possession out of that right underneath the hoop, so wisely threw it off the opposition, and KW gets the ball back with 19 on the shot clock. Tested three in the corner, puts it in. And the lead that was at one point up to 16 has been cut to 10. 
Thomas, as the first quarter expires, didn't get it off in time. Not a great start, but manageable. 39-29 through 12 minutes. Welcome you back to the odd word is a 10 point Moncton lead through 12 minutes. The Magic got off to an incredibly hot start led by as many as 16 in that first quarter. Sutland drew a foul on the opening play of the second. It's going to go on Freddie McSwain who's into the game for the first time. Lynn, the pump fake off the inbound and draws a foul that's going to go on Thomas. The first on Thomas, who is yet to find the score sheet this evening. Nigel Titer trying to get physical down low in the paint, but just unable to convert there. And Dondo. Drinks. Left hand trapped up over McLean and puts it in. Justin Strings trying to continue where he left off last night. Had a big game, 22 points, 12 rebounds, including two big first half dunks. It's that time driving and scoring is Freddie McSwain on the baseline. Strings misses on the floater. Goes across, and they give it right back to him for three. It's good. Wayne McCullough from downtown. They can beat you in a lot of different ways. Keep in mind the one time that the Titans beat the Magic this season, it was they were on arguably their hottest tear of the year in early January.
49-33 as Strings gets the bucket. Cuts the lead to 16 again, but the Magic relentless. Whitfield trying to back his man down in the post and draws a foul. That one's going to go against Kell. It's got to be tough for Flynn Whitfield, too, because when he plays physical, he gets himself into foul trouble, but then that's when he plays his best basketball. So he's got to be careful because we do know he can get himself into some foul trouble. Also like to take the opportunity to apologize for a bit of technical difficulties. And if you thought the Titans were struggling out of the gates, apparently so was our broadcast. But we're up and running now. Flynn Whitfield drains the free throw, 49-35. There's just been a relentless magic attack to start this one. That time, Kel to Endondo and another bucket, Moncton. At the 50 point mark, and not even four minutes into the second quarter. Here's Freeze and hasn't played a whole lot since coming back from injury. That time finds Whitfield down low, and he'll have a chance for two at the line. That'll be the second on McSwain. off this Ontario road swing with a loss in Sudbury on Thursday. That was a tough one. Trey Kell had 30 points off the bench. Billy White, his usual 20 points. Talk about how great he's been in the Hub City this year. The Magic lead at 14 after the free throws from Flynn Whitfield. And a blocking foul is going to be called on Ed Horton. So now he's got three in the first half. Last night for KW, they committed 38 personal fouls as a team. Four different players fouled out. Ed Horton being one of them, despite finishing with a team high 29. This quarter, it's been the magic getting themselves into a bit of trouble. They've got none to give before they're in the penalty. That was KW's first of the second. McCullough catch and shoot three. It's good. That's his second from downtown already. He shoots tremendously well from there. A 32% free throw shooter during the season. It looked like Ndondo tied up Whitfield on the play. And that'll lead to two free throws and officially put the magic in the penalty. Along with KW only committing one foul so far. One team foul so far in this second quarter. This allows you to get a little bit more physical, especially the guys who haven't picked up any fouls, drive to the basket more, and then hope to pick up fouls where you can just head to the free throw line and try and get some extra points from the charity stripe. Flynn Whitfield now 5 of 5 from the free throw line in this contest. I mentioned earlier the type of basketball that the Magic are playing out of this one. They're not getting super creative or beating you and the most fancy ways, just sound fundamental basketball. Lots of it coming from the defensive end of the Titans. Could use some of that right now. If they're able to play sound defensively, they'll be able to create a lot of opportunities on the other end. That time, McSwain, the air ball miss on the baseline jumper. Denzel Taylor is going to check back into the ball game. He had 13 points in that first quarter. Perfect four for four from the field. Friesen works into the corner for Bottiford. Lost the ball. Stolen away by McSwain. McSwain ahead to McCullough. Counted in the foul as McCullough goes crashing into the front row. Took a hard spill, but he'll have a chance for three. And 
that's the frustrating part for the KW Titans is when they start to do things well on the offensive end and you think that they're going to start to turn this ship around and, and chew away at that Moncton lead, the Magic just come back and hit and won. So now McCullough has a chance to extend it to 19 points and Moncton just overall playing very good basketball right now. Like you said, they've already got a playoff spot wrapped up and so does the rest of the Atlantic Division. They've got it all figured out. But they're trying to play spoiler right now. The KW Titan squad who's desperate for a win and keep pace after having won three of their last four. Ellis from way downtown, shot won't go. And if you're Cavell Johnson, this isn't the first half effort that you're looking for your team when you're trying to wrap up a playoff spot. Ooh. That was that crossover from Marcus Lewis. Puts Rick Botiford on skates, then nails the jumper, and that lead is officially up to 20 for the Magic. Whitfield slashing, lost the ball. Marcus Lewis the steal. Lewis to McSwain. Back out to Kell. The pump fake. Oh, and drives straight through for the two-hand jam. What a play by Trey Kell. The up fake and the two-hand slam. It is a 22-point Moncton lead. That trio of Denzel Taylor, Marcus Lewis, and Trey Kell have already combined for 35 of the Magic's points. They are flying out of the gates. Friesen back up top to Botiford. Drives, tries to swing it inside to Whitfield, and that'll be a blocking foul. It's going to go on Denzel Taylor. It's his second. But I think more importantly, Whitfield didn't pick up the offensive foul that time, which would have been his third. And those disqualifications have been a big story of the frustration for Whitfield this season. And of course, Moncton was in the penalty on their last foul. That's their eighth team foul of the second quarter, which means free throws for Rick Bodiford. Bodiford, a veteran in this league. This is his seventh season in the National Basketball League of Canada, making his 11th appearance for the Titans this season. He's also struggled from the free throw line this year, shooting under 60%. And that time comes up empty. Here's McCullough. Down low for McSwain. McSwain lost it cleanly. No, nope, last touch by Kitchener Waterloo. So it'll be magic ball. Shot clock should reset to 14. Hall will check back in as Whitfield heads off. And you can almost see Whitfield survive that rotation on the floor, comes away with no fouls. And that's a, a huge win for the KW Titans. There's a chance we probably won't see Flynn Whitfield till the second half now depending on how the rest of Derek Hall's half goes and, and the availability of Justin Strings and Nigel Titer for Cavell Johnson. But you look at the Magic stats right now, and they're shooting 64% from the field, 54% from the three-point line, whereas KW just 3 of 11 from three and 13 of 33 from the field. Turned the ball over seven times so far, and Moncton 14 points off turnovers. They're taking every, they're taking advantage every opportunity they get, and that's what separates a team at the top of a division and a team closer to the bottom of a division. That's going to be an offensive foul. Derek Hall called for the moving screen, and now he picks up his third foul. The big man. Hall was very effective when he checked in in that first quarter, scored eight points in a matter of minutes, but the problem was he also picked up two quick fouls, which meant Nigel Titer was forced in the rotation a little earlier than I'm sure Cavell Johnson anticipated. Titer played just eight minutes last night.
Here's McSwain. Ellis on him defensively. Back up top. McCullough for three. Shot won't go. Offensive rebound. Denzel Taylor. And a fresh shot clock for Moncton. Lewis can slow down the pace in the half court. And a foul is going to go on Derek Hall. And that's going to be his fourth. Oh. No, it's actually going to be an unsporting foul. Joel Friesen is going to be the one who picks it up, not Derek Hall. And he immediately was given the thumbs down. Doesn't hold back. So what happened was Denzel Taylor with the ball looked like he got his elbow up near the face of Joel Friesen. So after he passed the ball away, Friesen gave him a shove with his forearm to the chest of Taylor. The refs called an unsporting foul, but... I really don't think Cavell Johnson liked that play. It looked like he threw his blazer after. Well, he hasn't been happy with the officiating the entire first half and mixed that in with not being entirely happy with the play of his team. It's just not a good mix for the bench boss of the KW Titans. The official still talking things over. It'll be the first foul on Friesen of the game. I believe they also called an unsporting, which meant Moncton would take their free throws and retain possession. Denzel Taylor goes one for two. And the lead is up to 25 as the Magic get the ball back and 17 on the shot clock. Friesen comes off the floor as Sutherland checks into the game for him. Kell into the corner for McCullough. Three pointer won't go on the rebound by Bodiford. Smith is going to draw the blocking foul from Wayne McCullen. You mentioned it earlier, Jack. The Titans getting in the bonus early in this second quarter. You've got to take advantage, get as many cheap points, per se, as you can. When they were shooting a lot better from the free throw line when I said that. And then as soon as I brought it up, they started missing from the free throw line. So Ashton Smith has a chance to turn that around here. And he makes his first, but... KW, again, they started out very good from the free throw line, but now just 10 of 15. We talked about how well Moncton has played on the defensive end and what it's created for them in the offensive half court. Eight KW turnovers have led to 15 magic points off those turnovers. 63 to 40, Moncton. They're rolling here the first half and that's going to be just their second turnover Billy White throws it away and important for KW to get at least some kind of points on the board out of this possession Smith that's a contested three long and that's rebound. not the best way to do it iso ball three certainly not what they were anticipating to try and potentially Close the gap down to 20. White, shot won't go. Swatted right back to him. Goes up against Derek Hall and a late whistle. Ooh. That's, that's a terrible call. Terrible call. A very late whistle is going to go on Derek Hall. A blocking foul. That'll be his fourth of the game. That's a terrible call from the officials. Crowd is letting him hear it. Derek Hall has got to watch it. He doesn't want to pick up a technical. Nigel Titer is going to have to check into the game. The Titans bench is up in arms. The entire Kitchener Memorial Auditorium is up in arms. not so much a matter of whether or not there was a foul on the play it was that the whistle came two to three seconds after any contact 
I think it was a combination of that, and I don't think there was a foul on the play is, is the big part of that. But, yeah, like you said, the, the delay in the whistle on that foul, it was they waited until he missed the shot to make the foul call. Haven't been overly impressed with the officials here today. More times than not, I'll side on the side of the officials and say they get a lot of flack, but and they do a pretty good job. But uh, almost everybody has a couple rough days at the office in their job, and that's one of them. And that's a shot clock violation. 24 seconds had definitely not gone by. The shot clock did not reset after Ellis made that layup. Three forty-three to go in the first half, and what's been an absolute nightmare for KW and Moncton with nothing to gain, nothing to lose. But Marcus Lewis goes up and gains big time on that two-hand jam. How about seventy first half points, and a technical foul is going to be issued to Akeem Ellis, I believe. You can sense the frustration pouring over the KW's Titans, and it's from everybody. Akeem Ellis just picks up a technical foul. Cavell Johnson. He can't believe it. He thought that it was Cavell Johnson who picked it up as the referee ran by him, but it is going to go on Ellis. Everything had been going right for KW these last two weeks. They had won three out of four, and after not being in a playoff spot for over six weeks, they jumped back in one last night. And now things aren't looking as good tonight. Season's not necessarily over with a loss, but you don't make it easy on yourselves. Of course, this being one of their final two games of the season, as soon as you lose one of them, your fate is out of your own hands and you leave it up to the rest of the Central Division. Because there is still a chance if you lose one of the two, Windsor could win out and then jump ahead of you for that fourth spot. And if you lose, Sudbury guarantees themselves a spot or guarantees they finish ahead of you. So. That's where all signs are pointing here today, unless a massive comeback is in the works for the KW Titans. And just looking all too easy, Moncton had two great looks from downtown. Allman and Lewis missed them both, but still a 27-point Moncton lead. Smith pulls up and hits that jump shot from the free throw line. Trey Kell trying to cross up Rick Bottiford. And that's going to be an offensive foul going on Kell. This could be a good thing for the KW Titans. Just get a little bit of momentum heading into halftime. Try and whittle that lead down as much as possible. And then you'll have to come out firing in the second half. So just try and get things to fall your way. Try and get those easy shots. Try and get some open looks, but something that hasn't been all so easy for the KW Titans here tonight. This is the second half of a back-to-back -back between two arenas separated by about 300 kilometers, and they certainly have not looked sharp tonight. Kel floats it up. Oh, Billy White rips down the rim. is a human highlight reel. Billy White, a terrific season so far this year in Moncton. Remains KW ball, but Tremar Sutherland had enough time to try a three there, and based on the outcome, you would have been better off trying to make that three rather than driving and then getting stuffed by Taylor. 
Sutherland on the interior and lays it in. All you can really do is chip away at this point. Moncton's doing this without their top three-point shooter and Jason Caliste. Lewis, shot won't go. Sutherland had trouble reeling in that pass. Dishes to Smith in the corner. Three ball won't go, and that's uh, the easiest two points Nigel Titer will have of his career. As Trey Kell was on the ground there. Smith diving on the court, trying to force the turnover, and then Sutherland. He gave Almond a shove at the end. That's the correct call that time. That will put KW in the penalty, so that means free throws for the Magic. 40 seconds to play in this first half, and right now I'm sure Cavell Johnson just wants to get his squad to the locker room. words being exchanged there between Billy White and Ashton Smith who Ashton Smith's been very vocal about how displeased he is with his team's performance so far today well Smith of course a player who has championship pedigree has played throughout the league He's done his part so far, 15 points, four rebounds and assists, four of four from the free throw line. That time, he finds Nigel tighter. Smith picks up the dime tighter with a highlight reel play. And now a five second difference between the two clocks. So KW should get one more look before the half. down a three white stepped out so kitchener waterloo gets one last possession a chance to cut it to 20 or 21 certainly not something we're used to saying right before the half but that's the situation ellis from way downtown it's good maybe a bit of momentum the lead was up to 26 at one point it's 75-55 as Ellis connects from way downtown. That'll do it for the first half.
Magic foul, charge number zero, Gentry Thomas. She is second first one. She is fifth. Well, I'll try to remember me and work with his fourth personal and teach for it.
tennis foul turns number nine to Mark Sutherland, his second. The team's pick. Checking in for the Titans. Also, number one, Ashton Smith. Replacing Mark Sutherland.
And you're in type game against the Sudbury Five on Wednesday. That season series is currently tied, so the winner of that one will claim the season series and possibly a tiebreaker. That could be the difference between facing the London Lightning or the St. John's Edge in the first round. McSwain, three, and that's a long two actually for McSwain. Sudbury having a solid season coming into the NBL this year and you know making the playoffs in their first season and being able to contribute and they've got some support in that community as well. The Titans who are in their third year of operation, they'll tell you, hey, making the playoffs in your inaugural season might not be all that difficult. It's getting back there after. The Titans followed up their first round exit. 16-17 with an 8-32 season last year. It was the worst in the league. They've certainly bounced back. They're going to finish just below 500 this season. But still a great chance to get into the postseason. Almond nails the corner three. KW could still lose the rest of the year and get into the playoffs, but They'll also need the Windsor Express to match their record or finish lower. Of course, the win last night by KW against the Express gave them the tiebreaker. And that win was really huge. And honestly, if you're going to split these two games, that was the one to win. Absolutely. Yeah. So for KW, it's it's not like this, this game here is going to be the worst loss, like the worst possible loss for them. But it's it's a matter of how this game is going losing by 33 points in the fourth quarter before the midway part of the fourth quarter that makes you have to rebound and come back on wednesday but for kw that win last night was pro like put really puts the pressure on windsor they almost have to win out they just have to hope that kw will lose this one and then lose the one against sudbury on wednesday and then they just have to go two and one the rest of the way but for a team that's sitting in fifth in the central division it's not the easiest thing and they've certainly got some tough games to close out the year do the express they still got to play Moncton tomorrow of course they're going to be coming off a 25 to 30 point win then you gotta host London obviously the hottest team in the league and then travel to London two days after that so two against the Lightning will not be easy for Windsor Whitfield and Denzel Taylor got tangled up on that last play Whitfield is down and appears to be in some pain the big man Derek Hall hovering over him checking in terrible for the KW Titans if if they end up in a playoff spot this year
So Whitfield heads off, and the Titans go with a smaller lineup. Ellis and Hall are both on the floor playing with four fouls. That'll take us to the midway mark. The fourth quarter, Moncton, oh, they're still a big... Titans fans watching on, gotta feel somewhat disappointed, wondering, will this be the last basketball game on the hardwood at the Kitchen Memorial Auditorium this season? Now they'll be scoreboard watching for the next week or so. KW will play their last game Wednesday in Sudbury, but then Windsor still has two to play after that on Friday before the season officially wraps up Sunday, March 31st. When the Express visit the Lightning. It could all be figured out by then. Well, no, the one game you're going to be watching the most is the team that you're playing today, their game tomorrow at 2 o'clock. And that's a quick turnaround for Moncton, who's already put up 119 points in this contest. And then they got to play Windsor tomorrow, so you wonder... Is Moncton just going to go on a little bit of a run here and play some real good basketball? Or is this all the gas they have in the tank left in Ontario and, and Windsor gets a, a win tomorrow against the Atlantic Division leaders in the Moncton Magic and then things just get tougher and tougher for the KW Titans. Windsor is also missing some key players for the incident that happened on their Atlantic road trip, Chris Jones and DeAndre Thomas were both out last night and will also not play tomorrow against Moncton. Come on, Lynn hits the three ball. It's been a pleasant second half surprise for KW. He's really turned things on with the opportunity he's been given. That's his first three-pointer of the evening. Excuse me, it's his second. Damon Lynn's another guy, and you can really almost say it about every KW Titans player, is that they have the ability to take over a game. And really the only time where we've seen the entire team take over a game is that win against London, the 129-125 win last weekend. That's really when we saw a complete team effort, but usually it's a great performance by Damon Lynn and then secondary performances by other players, or you can insert said player here because Joel Friesen, Damon Lynn, Akeem Ellis, Derek Cole, Ed Horton, all those guys have carried the load on their back all season. And when they're off, somebody else seems to be on, but when you get it down to playoff time, you're going to need all those guys on all the time. Especially playing a team that's playing as well as the London Lightning are. Boy, oh boy, has London turned it on after what looked like a down year for them. Well, they've they really turned things around. A head coaching change early in the season. They've now won eight of their last ten. They're holding down that first spot in the central. McCullough hits the off-balance jump shot to get that magic lead back up to 30. Denzel James picks up the assist. Derek Hall picks up the two points. He is now the leading scorer for KW. 23 points, 13 rebounds. A good night for Hall, but was on the bench for the majority of this one in foul trouble. Kel trying to back down James, kicks out Lewis. Three rattles in and out. half of this back-to-back -back, certainly not friendly for the Titans gotta wonder what will be in store 
for the Magic in the second half of their back-to-back -back tomorrow at the WFCU Center. Paul's going to wrap him up and pick up his fifth, and I think that's just him saying, I've had enough. He's played a lot of minutes, especially now with the absence of Flynn Whitfield. Nigel Titer will check in for him. Like you said, played a lot of minutes, but played a lot of those minutes with four fouls. And in a game where he's played fairly well for the KW Titans, 23 points, 14 rebounds. Really was dialed in, him and DeMond Lynn, or sorry, him and Ashton Smith carrying the load, but just not enough is just an all-around team effort by Moncton will get them a win. Taylor in transition won't get the roll. He's had a great night. 20 points, nine boards for him. Oh, the athleticism from Denzel James. Lots of contact. Won't get the and one, but a loud two points. And that's pretty loud as well. Marcus Lewis, the one-hand throwdown. There ain't no stop in this Magic team tonight. And even up by 26. They continue to prove that when they come down in transition, they're going to hit you with some fast points. Like you said, that was fast and loud from Marcus Lewis, just putting it down with authority. Lynn no good on the quick release, tries another, and hit that one either. The rebound by Andondo. Inside the two-minute mark, Devon Lynn is going to get called for the reach-in foul that time. It's just Devon Lynn's first foul of the game. and He thought he got it clean and Strings misses on that attempt. As they continue to just wind that one down, tighter trying to rip it away. They're going to call held ball, which means Moncton gets it. They're actually calling Gentry Thomas on the foul. Moncton in the penalty. Nigel Titer will shoot two shots. Titer, despite his limited minutes on the season, has now appeared in all 38 games for Kitchener-Waterloo. Seems like he's started to play better as the season's gone on as well. We've and he is one of those rule guys. He comes off the bench. He gives you a little bit of help when guys like Flynn Whitfield and Derek Hall get into foul trouble. And, you know, he struggled a little bit earlier on in the season. But now he comes into the game and he can be effective. He can put up some points. He can rebound very well. And he can be a tough guy to play against at the offensive end of the court for, against the other teams. That is the sixth and disqualifying foul for Joel and Dondo. Tighter back to the free throw line for two. And Dondo finishes 8.7 boards. Trey Kell had an eye on his line early. It looks like he's going to fall just a couple short of the triple-double. He's got 14, 8, and 8. But he'll be on the bench for the last few minutes of this one. As 
they continue to wind down the clock. Taylor picks up the bucket off the assist from Thomas. Bodiford, an open look in transition, misses. Tighter had the rebound, but it was poked away. Thomas is going back and forth now to end this one. Bodiford will get it and the foul. That's his first points of the evening. Right from the get-go, they led by 16 early in the first quarter. Titans closed the gap to 10 in the second, and that's really the closest they got. Magic never let up in this one. Allman just chucks it up, and that'll give KW the ball back. With no time on the clock, and now it's time for handshakes on that Moncton bench. KW's not going to lose quite by 30, but... A frustrating night for the Titans on the tail end of their back-to-back. -back. They still hold on to a playoff spot, but now their fate is not entirely in their hands. They'll have just one game to go, three remaining for Windsor. And you can bet all eyes will be on the NBL Canada screen.